Hey guys, this is Desiree, and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing Ramsey by Mia Sheridan. So I may have lost my shit just a little bit when I received the arc. Um, I can very clearly remember telling my husband, and he brought this up last night as a matter of fact, that Mia Sheridan was the one author, if I received an arc from her, there was some part of my life that felt like I'd done something because I've been following Mia's work for a long time and there's just something about her writing and her stories that just really capture me and they always manage to stay with me. It's, she's just one of those authors who you know for sure writes from her very heart and her very soul and her characters and her stories stay with yours. They just etch themselves into your being and that's how they are for me. In a way it was one of those honors that I didn't think was really possible for me because my blog is so small. And I, I just didn't see it happening and it did and I cannot thank Mia enough for giving me that honor and giving me that opportunity to read one of her books before it was released. So Ramsey is another installment in the A Sign of Love series that she has going on. Uh, this one focuses on the myth of Ares the Ram and we find Brogue and Ramsey in sort of a princess in the stable boy type scenario when he's 17 years old. He and his family are Irish immigrants and they end up working as gardeners for this very affluent family in Greenwich, Connecticut. Rogan has been pining from afar Lydia de Havillard. Am I pronouncing that anywhere correctly? De Havillard? Fail. Her name is Lydia and because of the socio-economical differences between himself and Lydia he himself can barely manage to put food on the table. His father is kind of drowning himself in alcohol. He has a sister whose legs need surgery so she can walk. He's in a very dire situation. And then we have on the opposite end Lydia, whose family is just owning this beautiful mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut. And she's a little princess and she's an insatiable flirt and she seems to have the world by the balls. While Brogan and his family are just sort of barely scraping the ends to make them meet. So one day it seems like everything is going his way for once and that his desire for Lydia does not go unrequited when she expresses her desire to kiss him. And they kiss and things move a little too far and they actually end up being caught in the aftermath by her older brother Stuart who holds nothing but disdain for Brogan and his family. Not only that, but this other boy who was pining for Lydia walks in and asks Lydia, why did you tell me to meet you here? And it seems in that moment that Brogan was set up, that he was just betrayed by the woman he was pining after. And Stuart ends up saying, well, get on your knees, beg me for your job. And he ends up firing Brogan and his family and putting them out on the streets anyway. We move on to seven years later and that's where the story picks back up. Seven years later, Lydia is 23 years old. Her father has passed away and now she and her brother are in control of her father's company. And Stuart has driven it into the ground. There had been a lot of debt before that and Stuart just does not know how to manage anything. And they're trying really hard just to make ends meet to keep their company in the black and Stuart just keeps dragging them down. And then one day, Stuart is in the midst of a very heated poker match against a very familiar player, and that player ends up being Brogan. And unbeknownst to Stuart, he has just signed his company away to Brogan unknowingly when he loses the poker match. So now his greatest fear seems to come to fruition. And Brogan, the poor little Irish immigrant who he tossed out on the streets, is now in control of his father's legacy. Brogan is set out to take revenge on everybody who made his and his family's life as miserable as it was. He ended up moving to this really ratty, mold-infested apartment in the Bronx where they could barely do anything to survive. He had to do some very unsavory things in order to get by, and he is looking to exact his revenge on Stuart and Lydia. Now obviously when Lydia finds this out, this is quite a shock. And not only that, but Brogan has quite the interesting proposition for her. So this is a story about two young people who have gone through so much in their short lifetimes who don't know how to forgive themselves, forgive the people in their past, 
and they don't quite have an identity. Lydia is still very much living in the shadow of her father and in the shadow of what her family stood for. And now she's living in the shadow of her older brother who is just tanking this company. And Brogan is living in the shadow of vengeance. He's very much like an avenging angel of sorts. And he had to do so many different things, so many different unpleasant things to try to keep his family afloat, to try to pay for his sister's surgery so that she could walk, to just put food on the table. And now that he's finally made it somewhere, he wants revenge. He wants to make the people who have hurt him pay. And unfortunately, one of those people is Lydia. And the story follows whether or not both Lydia and Brogan can forgive each other and whether being vengeful is really the right path to making yourself happy, to making things right. And on the opposite end, Lydia, she needs to learn how to find herself and she just sees the good in people and she tries so hard to defend people who really don't deserve her defense. Ramsay is a story of betrayal and lost love. It very much reminds me of a princess and the pauper story that sort of reverses in on itself. I'm not sure if that made sense, but that's the best way I can kind of explain it. I promised Mia after I finished Ramsay that I was going to have the words to express how I felt about it by the time I filmed the review, and I think I may be failing just a tiny bit. In my last video, I had proclaimed that the throne of number one hero had been stolen away and now it's being stolen away again because now sitting atop that number one hero throne is Brogan. The thing is it's hard to explain why and that's what I love about it. Brogan is so complex and there's a level of depth in him that I haven't really seen in many other characters at all. The female, male, I just don't see that many characters with that level of depth. And not only that, but his character development was very realistic to me. The way he progressed throughout the novel, it's, it's a struggle to go from certain points in your life, you're feeling so desolate and, and helpless, and then you finally rise into a position of power, and you just want to use that power to exact revenge on everyone who tried to keep you down. You want to prove them wrong. You want to show yourself to them to prove that you've actually made it, that you could do something even though they told you that you were going to be nothing. And he also learns that things are not always as they seem. Even though Lydia came from a very affluent lifestyle, it didn't mean everything in her home was picture perfect. I felt for him the entire novel. My heart just broke for him. And he has, I think, the most adorable idiosyncrasies I've read about. He is incredibly good with math, so he really sees the world in numbers. He used to make patterns in the lawn, just diamond patterns, and he didn't need any sort of measurement to figure out how to make them even. He could tell when a picture was a sixteenth of an inch off. His senses are seemingly very heightened, so he can't really stand too many sensations simultaneously. And yet at the same time, he's kind of fidgety, so he's always touching something. He's either feeling around for textures or he's running his tongue over his tooth. He just has these really amazing and human idiosyncrasies that I don't think you really find in um, heroes in different novels. And Lydia, God, I fell for her. She was so misunderstood. And she's just the perfect picture of you can't really judge what you don't know. Just because you see a certain shell on the outside doesn't mean that there isn't something more or something completely different going on the inside. And there was so much more to her than just being the affluent little prissy rich girl. Rowan and Lydia very much find themselves throughout this book. And they do it through each other, but they mostly do it through the mistakes that they've both made. And that's what I love so much about this novel. And I think that's why this one is, and it's, <laughs> it, it was really tough to sort of pinpoint why I love this novel more, but this is my favorite one of Mia Sheridan's because I think of the sheer humanity of it. And these mistakes were all very real mistakes. And it makes us really think about all of the petty things that we do in life that just don't matter, that aren't worth 
the repercussions. Just the smallest mistake can really make the biggest impact on someone else or even ourselves or both. Rogan had such a naive and sweet, wonderful personality. He had this delicious Irish brogue. I mean, come on, is there anything sexier on the planet than a tall, dark-haired, blue-eyed Irishman with a thick Irish accent? I don't think so. And just when you think he can't get any sexier, there's Gaelic in the novel. And I never stop to think about what a beautiful language Gaelic is, but I think I want to learn it. And just seeing all the different, you know, Irish slang terms and all that, it was really, really fun. And I found myself sort of um, applying certain Irish slang terms to just my daily life. I loved that there was so much of the Irish culture included in the novel. So I think I might still be reeling just a little bit, but this is without a doubt my favorite novel by Mia yet. This book comes out, I believe, June 19th. I don't think there's a pre-order link up for Amazon just yet. I don't see how it's possible to not fall in love with Brogan. So before I say goodbye, I do want to say really quickly that A, droopy dick is now my favorite insult. That's pretty magnificent. And B, I will never look at cream puffs the same way ever again. All right, guys, so that is it for me. Hopefully, I didn't ramble too, too much. Again, I'm still kind of reeling from this novel just a little bit. The only thing I can say is Mia has created gold once more. It's a story from her heart, and you just feel it in the characters. Mia just has this innate ability to create these characters that just stay with you, and they really etch themselves onto you. At least they have for me. And she's always done it with her novels, and she certainly has done it now. I think I'm going to go back and read this novel again, just because I loved it that much, and I'm not ready to say goodbye to Brogan yet. I'm going to stick a little Irish flag in his butt, twist it, and claim him. Brogan is mine. All right, guys, so that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are not already to see some more videos from me, and I will see you later.